Hello everyone, my name is Julie Selby. I'm a social media teacher from Victoria, BC, Canada, and I'm on a mission to help get more, more positive voices to the online world. And I serve my clients by helping them get comfortable with all this technology so they can get on with building relationships that will help support their business and professional goals. Thank you, Vicki, for the thumbs up to let me know you can see the slides. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, this today's presentation is my favorite consumer trends and my my top five favorite social media marketing trends for small business and professionals for 2022. Just a brief in introduction for those who don't know me. Uh, my original business from Victoria, BC, doing local training here in my hometown was Vic Julie Selby Social Media. And my new brand that I'm shifting to is Sandy Social Marketing Training. Sandy is an ancient Sanskrit word that means friendship, joining, connection. And that's what I do. I help facilitate connection for my audience. I have taught digital communication skills for many years now. I taught also for many years at our local community college, Camosun College. I've been a guest speaker for the local universities, Royal Roads University, the University of Victoria, organizations like the Royal Bank, Etsy Canada, Rogers Communications, etc. So I've done lots of speaking over the years. And I have my business degree from here from UVic, the University of Victoria. And that's how I approach social media marketing. Um, social media can be a giant waste of time and you don't have time to waste. So we want to make sure that our activity, that we're spending time in the right places doing the right things and building relationships with the right people that will actually impact you supporting your business goals, business and professional goals. And I, how I support my audience is through one-on-one uh, -on -one private lessons, as well as I teach online courses and workshops. So feel free to check. If you enjoy learning from me today, you can feel free to check out my schedule of online classes. And I, I do serve uh, the US and Canada for my private lessons. So in today's presentation, we're going to talk about the current consumer mindset, which is, you know, all of us. Um, we'll talk about the consumer trends for potential content ideas for your content plan for this year, as well as I mentioned my top favorite social media trends. How should you spend your time on social media? And this could help you make some, have some ideas for some shifts for 2022. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll touch on future trends. So our current state. This should look very familiar. Long period of social isolation and travel restrictions, more time spent at home and online, online shopping, Zooming, scrolling social media, consuming content, streaming Netflix, Amazon, etc., cetera, uh, and YouTube, streaming YouTube, gaming. I'm not a gamer, but many people certainly game. And with all this online business, we are suffering from tech fatigue for sure. And the, the word of uh, 2022 was languishing. I'm just going to pull up my notes here. Uh, languishing is a sense of stagnation and emptiness, feeling blah, stuck, lack of motivation and focus, numb, joyless, aimless. So uh, yeah, and even someone even wrote a TED talk about languishing and how to uh, combat languishing. So we've been thinking a lot, rethinking or thinking a lot about what matters to us in life. So obviously physical, mental, spiritual health, uh, our family, our chosen family, what's important to us, our friendships. We're certainly rethinking work, um, you know, doing work that matters, workplaces. We're thinking workplaces. So many of us uh, are working from home now. And as well, in the future, we could go to more hybrid work situations where employers might not have been open to that in the past. Things have changed. Um, our sense of purpose. What are you, what are my values? What's my social responsibility? Um, and hobbies and interests like rethinking like what brings you joy in life? What's fun, fun for you? And maybe you want to be doing more of that in life. Maybe you want to be having some more fun. So it's been a time of rethinking. Consumers are craving human connection and authenticity. I miss hugs. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to hug everybody again. And as soon as it's safe to do so, I'm going to be hugging you and hugging you and hugging you until it's awkward because um, I'm a hugger. Uh, we've And we've been an interesting shift about social media too has been shifting to connecting around interests more online around our interests and values versus just friends and family. So Facebook has been kind of the top platform where people connect with family, friends and family. And we're seeing more people interested in TikTok and uh, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, etc., where 
people are actually gathering around what's interesting to them or perhaps even gathering around causes that's, that they're passionate about. And with that, they're expecting brands and businesses to have a sense of purpose and social responsibility and even expect you to help play a role in making the world a better place. So um, even to the point where they don't want to just hear about a one time donation anymore, they really want to know what matters to you and, and what you're doing about that in the world. So some consumer trends, I kind of grouped these ones under self-care and healthier habits. And many of these from the these trends, consumer trends from the next two slides come from the Pinterest trends report, which they brag from the previous year's report that they got 80% uh, of their, their uh, predictions right. Now, because trend, uh, Pinterest is a search engine, um, and less of a social network, more of a search engine where people are open to discovering new things. People, they have a lot of data on what people are searching for. So that's how they can be good at predicting future trends. Um, by the way, throughout the presentation, I invite you to share your questions. I'm going to be focused on the presentation here. So I will, if I don't get to your question right away, I will absolutely be sure to answer all of your questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So with uh, with the self-care and healthier habits, so I'm just going to touch on some of these uh, here, but I, I do recommend if you if you sell to consumers at all, I highly recommend checking out the Pinterest trends report, which I've linked to at the end of the slides here. Um, so some trends nurture with nature. That one's not a big surprise. Many of us are spending out in time, time in nature for you know mental health and enjoyment uh, because that was one thing we could do. Certainly that's affected travel trends. People want to be have outdoor destinations where they can be in nature. They're looking for destinations with a smaller footprint and businesses, uh, travel companies that do business with a smaller footprint in a more sustainable way. Um, emotional escape rooms was another interesting one. So people are are have interest in creating some some kind of a sanctuary in their home. It could be for meditation or yoga. It could be a massage room. It could be, there was even searches, an increase in searches for rage rooms. So interesting, uh, it could be a, perhaps a corner in, in a room in your home, or it could be a separate room. Um, developing spirituality was a huge one. So of course, that's not probably not a surprise with all of us rethinking everything and, and wanting to, you know, what's important to you in life, developing spirituality, wanting to raise your vibrations, wanting to protect your energy. So as an example, in my business, I teach a lot about time management for social media, making sure that the time you spend, you're, you're using efficiently on these platforms, as opposed to just mindlessly scrolling. So I could frame that in terms of how to protect your energy. Top, my top five tips to protect your energy on social media, instead of saying social media time, top five social media time management tips, because that is a phrase that's going to be trending. Um, other health or ha healthy habits, including afternoon tea. I thought that was a cool one, cup of tea time. And so using pretty fancy teacups and drinking, you know, um, fancy types of tea. That was kind of a fun trend. Um, I'm, I'm Canadian, of course, so uh, I've been drinking tea most of my life, though when I lived in the States for many years, uh, everyone would say, let's go for coffee. I'd say, let's go for tea. And they'd say, let's go for coffee. So I ended up turning into a coffee drinker during my time in the States, but I have recently rediscovered tea. I love good cup of Earl Grey with uh, milk and sugar. Uh, low alcohol bar. Now this one wasn't from the, the Pinterest trends report. This was one from a company out of uh, Toronto called uh, Trend Hunter. And so low alcohol bar trend was a trend where they're predicting that younger people as they get out and socialize in bigger numbers again are going to be more interested in focusing on the social aspect of spending time with their friends and less on, you know, excessively drinking, which is a cool thing. Another Another one here is low intensity exercise. So that was um, essentially no sweat exercise. Like it's been a rough couple of years, let's be honest. So how can we be kind to ourselves? Even if we just get out for a walk, get our body moving. And I thought a kind of an interesting search was increase in searches for exercises I can do in bed. We're all just doing our best, right? I'm just gonna take a peek at my notes here. There's just a quote, quick quote I want to read. This was from the um, HubSpot Trends Report. Now more than ever, people are prioritizing themselves, their values, their personal time, and self-care. Brands that build alignment through personalized, mission-oriented, honest content will see the greatest traction. That's a quote from Colleen Malloy of Global Empl Employment Brand Manager at Axon Enterprise, Inc. 
And that was, again, that was in the HubSpot Social Media Trends Report for 2022 on page 54, which I've linked to at the end of the presentation. Another kind of general theme around consumer trends that I saw that I thought was cool was I want to have more fun. And I've even heard some of my friends on social media, you know, everyone's talking about what their word is for 2022 and what they want more of in 2022. I want more dancing personally in life. I need some more dancing. Certainly I do my living room dance parties with uh, my eight year old niece, which is great fun. But um, there's a in our in our hometown, there's a gal that does outdoor silent disco. So she's got the headsets and she goes on the beach or outdoors somewhere in all weather, rain, snow, whatever. She's uh, she takes people outside and they dance. So that's something I want to try this year is to get help get more dancing in my life. So what do you want more of? Um, so some of the trends around this alt bashes was one trend. This was, again, a lot of these from from the Pinterest report. Alt bashes, meaning alternative uh, parties, uh, you know, have a have a party when you get a new pet to celebrate have a party when you get divorced, have a party as an empty nester. Basically, one person said, any excuse for cake, we're happy to have some cake. Um, and along with that, another trend was called batter up. And that was around baking fancy cakes. So certainly more interest in baking at home these days. And but baking like gravity defying fancy cakes was with some of the, the searches. Um, this one in particular, uh, I love let your inner child play. So many of us are trying, you know, crafting, knitting, painting, um, you know, getting back to play with some, you know, kind of artistic activities, which is really cool. And I hope for me personally, I want to help translate that into my video content this year in terms of doing some vertical, some fun vertical video content to help share my message and educate my audience. Dance challenges will continue. I know some of you are cringing because not everybody loves the dancing on video for your business. Uh, and it's not right for everyone. I'll acknowledge that. But dance challenges will continue because, you know, they're fun. Healthy relationships. So if you are someone who has uh, topic expertise around healthy relationships of any kind, whether it be work, professional, personal, um, one of the top searches on Pinterest or um, of areas of interest searches were uh, couples relationship worksheets. So I thought that was kind of an interesting one too. And then on um, on the style side, uh, bright color clothes are coming back. So when I was in high school, there were bright neon, pink, green colors. So bright colors, patterns, that's all coming back. Rebellious hairstyles are coming back. So, you know, partially shaved bright colors in the hair um, and the mullets coming back. Crazy, right? So I'm assuming everyone knows what a mullet haircut is. It's short on the top, long in the back. So business in the front, party in the back. Uh, but it's not your old school mullet. It's like the cooler, newer Miley Cyrus version of the, the mullet, mullet hairstyle. So that's coming back, rebel hairstyles. And sparkles, even sparkles on, um, sparkles will be a big trend for beauty. So sparkles on eye makeup, sparkles on teeth, sparkles in hair, uh, and even edible sparkles on cupcakes. So back to the, the baking trend there. So in general, people wanting to improve relationships, looking to have more fun in their life. And this is that company that I've mentioned. It's Trend, Trend Hunter, a, a Canadian company. And they've got a really awesome video on um, how how things are shifting with what's happening. He talks about the status quo and then the chaos that's ensued because of, of the health crisis. And now that's given us an opportunity to pause, to rethink things. And uh, so with that, we have an opportunity to change behavior, to make changes. And so he's they're predicting there will be a great period of creativity and experimentation. So they said like after the bubonic plague uh, came the Renaissance, after the the pandemic of the early 1900s came the roaring 20s. So this is a really interesting video. I highly recommend you watch this. He said, after this period of chaos, it will be the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. Uh, he said there will be a period of two to three years as we come out of this time that we've shaken up the status quo and we're rethinking things. Um, people will emerge from their shells to try new things and make up for lost time. And that's Jeremy from Trend Hunter. I'm going to just take a quick peek here at the uh, at the comments. Yay! Thank you, Shaz. Shaz has joined as well to the presentation. So again, hello everyone. If you've just joined us with on the presentation, I'm Julie Selby, and uh, let's head back to. I'm going to go right back to it. 
So let's dive into my top five favorite social media marketing trends for 2022. Trend number one, uh, social video trends. Now, in and of itself, video is not a new trend, but I would say not enough of us are doing video for so many reasons. We're worried about how we're going to look. We're worried about the background. We're worried about the sound. We're worried about the tech. We're worried about putting ourselves out there. We're worried about what people will think. So guess what? It's beyond time to get over that. If you want to raise your visibility in your business and have people people feel connected to you, you need to get, you need to share real pictures, you need to share video. And certainly there is this huge trend right now brought on by TikTok with their vertical video format. They started off with this entertaining vertical video format and it's because we are, you know, we're all most of us viewing media on social media on our phones and the vertical format fills up the entire screen so it's this immersive experience so you can certainly still do some video in this format and people can turn their phone on the side but in general um, you know most people are holding the phone upright so TikTok had a one minute video format. They've, they keep extending it. It's now three minutes long. It's now up to five minutes long for vertical video on TikTok, though I don't see too many people using that length at this time. But of course, Facebook is threatened by TikTok as they should be. Uh, and so they've copied their format and they're calling it Reels. So Instagram now has Reels, which is a one minute vertical video format, one minute maximum. And they've recently added even Reels on Facebook. So it has not been available everywhere. Reels on Facebook at this time are currently 30 seconds long. And uh, I believe they will eventually shift to one minute on Facebook Reels. They are literally just opening Reels on Facebook up to more countries. So Canada was one of the first countries that got access to Reels. and uh, but, but now they've just opened it up to the US. So as more and more countries get access to this vertical video reels formats, uh, there's going to be more competition. And they need content right now. They literally are, are um, because it's a new format and they're wanting to keep people on the, their platforms, they are uh, emphasizing that in the algorithm. So people are getting more, more organic reach, more free organic reach by sharing these vertical short videos in the reels format. And they're actually paying content creators. Facebook is paying content creators right now. Um, and I you know, I believe it's not a huge amount for, you know, unless you've got a giant audience, but um, they're, they need content. So this is your chance. Mari Smith, who's a queen of Facebook, face, world famous Facebook expert, has said, go all in on Facebook Reels this year. So if that platform is a fit for your business, look at Facebook Reels. You can do Facebook Reels for a business page as well as a personal profile. And I'm seeing Reels now in groups. So uh, they're absolutely putting emphasis on it. And if you get in there and start creating, some, and now you don't have to necessarily dance or lip sync to songs. Um, certainly some of that can be fun. I'm not a huge fan of the lip syncing because I think if you don't quite get the timing correct on the lip sync, it looks doesn't look good. But everybody can do some movement, some dancing, some pointing at the screen because they've got creative tools that you can do things like add text overlay to the screen, add moving stickers, add um, and for 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 us that are concerned about you know our. 40 plus uh, little wrinkles there. They have beautification filters too. Um, I posted a video not long ago on um, LinkedIn talking about my love of my month at a glance paper calendar and someone commented, hey, your skin is looking glowing. So I, of course I had to tell her I used a beauty filter on Instagram just to be transparent. So yeah, there are, are you know, ways that you can um, have fun using these the creative tools that they provide. I've seen people even having success just doing video tutorials in the video, vertical video format with, you know, Microsoft Excel tips, and they don't even necessarily put themselves on video. So there are lots of ways that you don't have to dance on video to do vertical content. Also, another trend in video would be live longer, or pardon me, not not just live, it could be live content, uh, but also longer video content. So I want to speak specifically to streaming on YouTube. So just as we are streaming Amazon, Netflix, Disney Plus, etc., on our TVs, on our smart TVs, people are streaming YouTube on their TVs. So my eight-year-old niece has um, this doll soap opera that she likes to watch. This gal named Kelly does this pretty amazing creative uh, soap opera with dolls and, and my niece will sit and watch it with her parents. So, you know, we have all kinds of niche. So it's like the we, the consumer 
is in the driver's seat in terms of what content we want to watch. We have a lot more choice than we have in the past about what we want to watch. And people are streaming YouTube content to their smart TV. So if you're thinking about doing some longer content in the horizontal format for YouTube, that could be cool. Uh, someone I greatly respect, Mike Vardy, productivityist, he um, does an expert on time management, expert and coach on time management and has a podcast. I noticed he had said he's going to go all in on YouTube this year. So I thought that was very interesting. So doing short vertical con content, doing longer content, horizontal for YouTube potentially. Uh, and of course, live. Live is still gives you an edge in the algorithm. LinkedIn Live is new, new to us as well. Of course, pretty much every social platform there is has live video. And as well, many if not all of the social platforms are incorporating live shopping. So if you have a business that sells products, um, particularly if you sell any kind of products that could help people with having more fun in their life and self-care, you might think about doing some online videos with shopping. So I know there are some more integrations coming with that. Certainly Facebook and Instagram, you can set up your shopping right on those platforms and they'll give you the ability to tag some of your, your products in your live video potentially. Even currently now you can tag products in Reels, I believe. Um, and one last tip on video trends. This was an interesting one I thought I saw from uh, Sue B. Zimmerman, who's an Instagram expert. This was from the Social Media Examiner uh, Trends article. And she suggested that you do personalized videos in private messages. So most of the, pri most of the social media platforms platforms have video, uh, the ability to send a short video in private messages. I think most are up to a minute long. And why not send a little video saying, you know, hey, hey, Vicky, it was, it, you know, so nice to connect with you. Or actually someone recently, there's a gal I'm sort of watching and learning about TikTok right now. And a gal, I followed a gal who's a TikTok coach, and she actually sent me a little video. And it was a video of her and it said, hey, just so nice to connect. I'm just curious how you how you found me. And then she put in a text note to say, hey, Julie, so nice to connect with you. So the video didn't have my name in it, but uh, the text did. And I thought that was that was OK. Sue B. Zimmerman says, don't do that. She said you should use the person's name in your video. But essentially, no one's doing that yet. So that could be a really cool way to stand out. Um, just one more point on. Um, on YouTube streaming, YouTube streaming, this was from YouTube last year, and they're referring to 2020, streaming households outnumbered cable TV households in the United States for the first time. So as I mentioned, people are watching longer content and watching with other people. So, uh, okay, all right, very good. And on to trend number two, user generated content. So what do I mean by user-generated content 2.0? Well, user-generated content 1.0 was uh, looking for content that included your brand. So that could be customers that had shared a picture or video of your products or services. So in my case, I've had people in the past when I've given presentations take a picture of the screen and share it on social media and tag me. So if, if someone shares something that um, you think is a good piece of content, you want to ask their permission and then you can share it on your own uh, channels. So I work with a brand named Enchanted Expedition that sells Galapagos and Ecuador travel. And we had some guests that traveled to, to Galapagos and traveled on their yachts this year that were, they were just everyday consumers, but they took incredible pictures and video. And uh, so we asked their permission, can we share this on our social media? And they said, sure. So that would be user generated content 1.0, asking for their permission. So user generated content 2.0 is, I, I believe brands are going to, could benefit from taking a more proactive approach to reaching out to their customers to include them in creating a piece of content together. So for example, in my business, I'm launching a podcast this year and I've already done two interviews with two of my uh, past clients who are lovely. Um, and one of them in particular is doing some really fun vid video content. Deborah Marcia Rubin, shout out to her. She teaches breathing, meditation, wellness, and uh, clarity coaching. And she, uh, she's, got, she's got some really fun video content coming out this year. So I could do a vertical, plan to do a vertical video with her or a vertical video series with her. So how can you actually more take a more more proactive approach to actually create content for your um, with with say one of your clients or a strategic alliance for your your audience. Uh, now both parties should benefit, so this should be the the collab or collaboration should be a win win situation. And every time you do a collaboration, you get exposed to their followers, they get exposed to your followers, and you potentially um, build more. I think this is very interesting possible 
solution to the problem of trend number one. We all struggle to create vertical video content or we struggle to come up with content for our brands. So how could you partner with someone, either just a regular user who has a talent for creating some content or perhaps a local influencer or some influencer in your niche to possibly create content that you could use for your brand? Uh, just a couple of uh, st statistics from a survey, 79% of people say that user-generated content on social media significantly impacts their purchasing decisions. This was from a company called Stackla, and I've got this again, the, the link is at the end of the presentation. Um, user-generated content can in also include online reviews like Google or Facebook page reviews, pictures, videos, etc. And also interesting in this report, 90% of consumers say authenticity is important when deciding which brands they like and support. Although 92% of marketers believe most or all of the content they create resonates as authentic with consumers, 51% of consumers say less than half of brands create content that resonated as authentic. So this was a survey of almost 1,600 consumers and about 150 um, marketers from the US, UK, and Australia. So essentially, we think our content's authentic, but the audience d doesn't necessarily. So moving on. Trend number three, social audio trends. So lots going on in the social audio space. In, in terms of audio in general, more and more people are using voice search. I, I watch my niece and my nephew in my life use the voice search for pretty much anything they can instead of typing. Um, there's a trend for audio logos as well. Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about audio logos. Uh, and so you'll start to you know notice those more uh, for brands. Think about what does your brand sound like? Uh, and short audio posts. So Twitter already has voice tweets. I'm not seeing a ton of use yet on the voice tweets. I don't know if that's because you can't customize the visual on the voice tweet tweets. It essentially shows your profile picture on every uh, tweet. But also coming to Facebook, they've got something called sound bites, and which are currently available in the US, which allows you to just take your phone and you know you could speak a quote or you could share a thought, share one tip uh, in a short audio post. So that hopefully will be coming to Canada at some point soon. Um, but the trend that I'm the most excited about right now is live audio in Facebook groups. So they're not the first ones to do it. Obviously, there was a, a company called Clubhouse, a social network called Clubhouse that was all the rage uh, during the past couple of years. Seems to have waned a little bit in popularity because they weren't, they didn't have, you know, they're going up against Facebook and, you know, bigger company Twitter, bigger companies that have a lot more resources, already have a lot more users, have a lot more features. So for example, the private chat functions already built into Twitter. So Twitter has one called Twitter Spaces. Facebook is calling theirs live audio rooms. And from what I understand, you can go live as from a personal profile, from a business or into a group. And for me, what I've observed on Twitter from Twitter Spaces is it can be quite random who shows up in the rooms. I've sat in on a number of rooms. So when you're in a live audio experience, uh, you can have the speakers up at the top. So certain people will be speaking or networking, but you can also just be a listener. So your audience can just sit in and listen. So kind of like live radio style. And I, I love that whole idea because um, it's more informal. You don't have to be camera ready. I think people might be more com comfortable uh, participating, even just listening. Uh, and then they can request, listeners can request to speak. They can ask for the mic and actually uh, take part in the networking or the conversation, whatever's going on. So on uh, Twitter spaces, I'm noticing it's quite random who shows up. So I love the idea of being able to do live audio rooms within your own group and that functionality is available now um, so if and at least in Canada I'm seeing it in my my groups and I I'm going to use my audio rooms in my private group as a discussion group uh, to support my podcast so I think that'll be a really cool way as I'm developing building my audience for my podcast that I can have more of a two-way communication with them and really serve them support them and get to know get to know them better so on the slide here I've got a, a, a screenshot this is a product walkthrough of live audio rooms for groups uh, from Facebook. So I've got the link here on this uh, slide and I highly recommend if you're interested in that. So again, just to kind of finish my thought about that, 
you have more control. When you have a private group on Facebook, even if it's a, for your business page, you have control of who joins the group and you have control of who can see the, you know, who can see the content and who gets to stay in the group. So that would give you a little bit more control um, for creating a space for communication. Trend number four, social diversification. I'm calling it that. Um, as, as, uh, as Facebook, Facebook had a rough year. Do we feel sorry for Facebook? Boo-hoo. No, certainly not, right? Don't feel sorry for them. Um, you know, with, with the, all the revelations of uh, basically how they don't respect users and also the outage. I don't know if you recall the, there was like a whole day where all of Facebook's products were literally down. So I think that got a lot of people thinking about, um, you know, Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have all my eggs in the Facebook basket. So for those who don't know, Facebook owns Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger. So if, for example, you focused your marketing primarily on, say, Facebook and Instagram, you might want to think about, um, you know, adding an, another channel that's not a Facebook channel to your mix uh, and even potentially diversifying some of your ad budget. If if all, all of your ad budget is currently being spent on Facebook products, maybe you look at you know, doing advertising on Pinterest or Reddit or, you know, TikTok, one of the other social media channels. The, um, the other thought I wanted to share too, I've, I've heard some people say, well, I'm quitting Facebook. It's unethical. It doesn't respect users. That is a, the, certainly a big topic of discussion. Um, uh, for most of us, it's not practical to just quit Facebook products in general because that's where our family networks are, that's where our professional networks are. And so I, I'm taking the approach that I want to get on these platforms and do my best to do good, do social good and um, help power, empower folks, empower more leadership and positive voices to get online and do good because there are there is certainly also a lot of good happening on the platform um, from all these free tools that P Facebook provides to us. So they really do provide a lot for small business and uh, and people to to connect, legitimately connect. Um, Pinterest certainly is a platform to consider. TikTok is a platform to consider. I'll touch more on that in a moment. I want to share my thoughts on YouTube because YouTube is kind of up in that 2 billion user club just as um, uh, as Facebook is. Facebook's products kind of dominate the two, two billion user club globally with the exception of one Chinese social network and now two Chinese social networks. Uh, WeChat is another one and now TikTok has finally joined the two billion user club. Um, but with that said, YouTube is owned by Google and uh, YouTube is also a search engine. So um, YouTube has the potential to really give Facebook a run for its money if, if it decides to go full force as a social media platform. What do I mean by that? If you're, if you are an avid YouTube user, as I am, you'll notice that accounts that have 10,000 users or more, subscribers or more, followers, uh, already have the ability to post photos, to post polls, to reshare their own videos, to get that back, back in the fresh content stream. And so if YouTube decided to open up that ability to us regular users that have less followers or less subscribers, they really could be a full-fledged social network that would absolutely give Facebook, it could give people a reason to even leave Facebook potentially and join YouTube. Um, also, YouTube has stepped up its podcast listening options. So did you know you that they have a paid version of YouTube also? It's the best $13 I spend every month to not have to watch ads on YouTube. And I listen to podcasts on YouTube. They've even added listening controls so I can speed up the podcast, uh, slow it down. I can download um, videos or, you know, essentially my podcasts to listen offline. So they've added quite a new few new features as well. Also, TikTok's going up against TikTok and they've got a short vertical video format called Shorts. And so um, that could be a potential platform to add to your mix to diversify. In, uh, LinkedIn is another one. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. LinkedIn now it has 800 million users. They continue to grow uh, globally and it is the most trusted social network. Um, and it's changing. Uh, the the they've lightened up LinkedIn over the years. It's not your grandma's LinkedIn anymore. It's come a long way. So they've copied a lot of the Facebook features, Facebook like features to increase user engagement. And LinkedIn itself has really finally lightening up. LinkedIn, as I mentioned, is focusing on creators. And so they've they've just recently in the fall did a video campaign that talks about what is professional. And they're saying bringing your inner child to work is professional. You know, coming as you are is professional. Bringing your emotions to work is officially professional. 
this is coming from face or coming from LinkedIn from their their career. So if you look at the uh, LinkedIn creator uh, LinkedIn company page, you'll see a bunch of posts coming out of there. But things are changing. They're encouraging people to show up as you are, so we don't have to be quite so stuffy maybe over on LinkedIn. And even in the last week, there was a post from a gentleman who shared an informal photo of himself and uh, said authenticity is the new professional. And he went on to talk about how he really just wants to speak in conversational language the way he would normally speak in person on his LinkedIn. He's, he doesn't want to have to put up a professional front on LinkedIn anymore. So, and the coolest thing about that post is the former CEO of LinkedIn, Jeff Weiner, now the chairman of, uh, C of LinkedIn, quoted him and said, authenticity is the new professional, um, hashtag truth. It was hashtag truth or hashtag agree, something like that. So, um, things are changing. So, LinkedIn could be another one that could potentially give Facebook a run for its money as a more they haven't had the same kind of scandals that Facebook's had and, and miss, tr trust me, they're not perfect. They've had their issues in the past, but they're considered a more trustworthy social network. And LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft, which is also a trustworthy social network. Um, Reddit is another one that's always been popular in the US, certainly gaining ground in Canada. And um, they there that's another one that's based around interests as opposed to same with link i would say linkedin though it's a professional network is definitely geared around interests as well as opposed to being it's more more the economic and work social graph but certainly we can connect around interests on linkedin as well and just some other milestones from TikTok. I mentioned they reached a billion users according to their blog in September of 2021. And they also, in 2021, this is very big news, they overtook Google as the most popular site on the web. Um, so, um, the and yeah, TikTok overtook Google as the most visited domain in the world. Uh, crazy, right? So no wonder all the big guys uh, like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and everybody and their dog, even Snapchat has now copied TikTok and has added a vertical video format because it's popular. People are, are uh, enjoying it. And another important point on this um, headline here, it says the way people use technology to find information is changing. So I think that's very interesting too, because Gary Vaynerchuk has talked for a long time about Amazon Alexa, Google Home, you know, what do you do when like many of our efforts are around content marketing and having content on our website and search engine optimization, getting traffic from search engines like Google and Bing and others. And so what do you do when a consumer is talking to their Alexa, you know, audio device and saying, you know, book me a flight or, you know, book or make a restaurant reservation or order me these groceries. What are you going to do then? How do you get in on that? So not only are people using their smart um, speakers to search for stuff. They're using Pinterest to search for stuff. They're looking, you know, looking on Reddit. TikTok is, is people are searching for stuff on TikTok. So just an interesting shift. And this is a graph from the We Are Social Hootsuite report. Um, Data Reportal is the company that does this report with Hootsuite. And they said the typical social media user now uses 6.7, an average of 6.7 social platforms every month. So if you, in terms of thinking about what platforms could be a fit for you, which ones do you use? Which ones do you enjoy? Which ones do your customers use or your audience? And where can you find common ground with them? Because you don't necessarily, you know, Facebook might not be, you know, there are, there's more than Facebook out there potentially. So for many of us, Facebook is a, certainly still a core uh, platform in our marketing, social marketing strategy, but there are other choices if you do want to diversify. The other point to note for us as businesses, consumers use social different social media platforms in different ways. I use Twitter for getting news, global news, health news, industry news. Uh, I use YouTube for consuming a lot of content. Some of it's news, some of it's personal, some of it's marketing. Um, and then I use Facebook, Instagram to network with friends and family and then LinkedIn to stay in touch with professional connections. So you want to think also in your strategy about how people are using each social channel. I'm going to just minimize my screen here for just a quick moment. I just want to peek in at your comments. All right. So we've got a question from Shaz, from Shannon. I love all the tips for how to shoot video when I'm by myself. Do I need to get the, yes, you would get a tripod, absolutely. Um, the other thing that I have that I love 
is this little gorilla um, guy here. And it's got kind of bendy legs. So you can like wrap it around poles and all kind of stuff. So this just this can fit any smartphone in it. So like if you if you like that idea, I can share the link to that. But yeah, by all means. Or, um, you know, the other thing that I've done too is you go, go and photo shoot with a friend, right? So my friend, Deb Alcadino, her and I went and did a photo shoot this past summer. So she's another businesswoman like me that needs content for her marketing. So in this case, we just did photos, but you could also take take a friend, another business person who needs some content for their social media and you could plan to support one another doing um, some photos and video. That's another idea as well. All right. Trend number five. This one will be much shorter, I promise. Um, this is artificial intelligence or AI writing tools for time management. So there are all kinds of artificial intelligence uses for social media now. We've had uh, chat bots. There are tools that will edit video. There are tools that will transcribe your video, uh, you know, transcribe the words from your video content, etc. But one of the ones that I think is most interesting are these writing tools because most of us, all of us, most of us struggle with writing. Speaking for myself, I struggle with writing. So whether it is uh, captions for your social media posts, whether it's blog articles for your website, you know, your blog or content for your website pages, or especially this is for e-commerce brands. So if you sell uh, products online, I know e-commerce brands struggle with what to put as a unique description for products. So these tools, this little screenshot here pops in uh, a few words, uh, candles, soy based and hugue. Uh, it's a, I can't remember, it's a, a European word that means like fun, comfort, joy. And so they pop it in here and you can see the machine came up with a description for them. So I think this could be really handy for us. Uh, these tools are not they still need human involvement, right? You, you can use these tools to come up with some, you can either put a bit of content, you put some words in, put some content in, and they'll uh, come up with some co original content for you. But you still need a human touch in there to massage it, make sure it's in your, your tone of voice, etc. But um, I think these are really, these could be a real time saver. So something to look at this year. And again, I've got the links on the slide. So if you'd like a copy of these presentation slides, I'd be glad to share them with you. Just send me a private message on my LinkedIn. Um, Shout out to Bonnie Chomika as well. She's the one that shared this co-schedule headline analyzer tool. So if you have a headline for your video or your blog post and you can pop it in this little tool and it will come up with one that they that it thinks is better for you. So uh, Bonnie is someone uh, that helps. She's a content marketing expert and writer and she helps people with their written content for their business. So all your emails and website content, etc. So she, I know she's got a course coming up. So shout out to Bonnie Chomika and her content course. If you want to get your content in order this year, feel free to hit me up and I'll be glad to introduce you to Bonnie. So what is the future of social media? Um, certainly augmented reality and virtual reality. So we're hearing a lot of talk about the metaverse these days and virtual spaces. Uh, so virtual reality is when you actually sort of strap on the goggles and you kind of go into the virtual world. So this is even, you know, this is already happening. I think about the young people in my life, my, um, by now they're not doing virtual reality they're doing they're, they're gaming but you know in terms of hanging out in virtual spaces my my nephew plays Fortnite, and that's you know that video game has been his social uh life during especially during this time when we've been at home so some say social media games like Fortnite, roblox minecraft etc they're the new mall that's where young people are hanging out uh spending time together online um so in terms of like virtual reality in the metaverse, not enough people have the equipment yet um, for that to go mainstream. Uh, certainly, if if you know if you have an audience, if your your ideal client is an early adopter, if you're an early adopter, this would certainly be a time to purchase the equipment and maybe start to you know check things out. Just as I'm currently like you know snooping around on TikTok so I can learn and see how how people are using TikTok and creating video vertical video content. Um, but most of most of us average people, you do not need to worry about the metaverse, at least not for 2022. Augmented reality would be, you know, there that that would potentially be the future because they were there, it's a more lightweight glass, glass uh, option. So companies like Snapchat, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook has a deal with Ray-Ban currently. They are working on trying to come up with some viable artificial reality glasses that would just um, 
pardon me, augmented reality that would enhance reality. So that might be, you might be at an, at a, you know, walking down the street and see a virtual art exhibit up here. Uh, or there was one example I heard of where a nonprofit uh, created a, an unauthorized, um, virtual um, enhancement to a mu museum to, to decolonize the exhibits. So I'm sure the museum didn't know about that or approve of that, but um, that um, that was just a very interesting use where you put on the glasses and you can get more information about what it is, see more things or get more information about what it is you're looking at. So that, you know, social, socializing and doing business in virtual spaces certainly will be part of our future. And that could be, um, you know, meeting in meeting rooms, that could be um, even students, if, if they need to be taking school in virtual spaces, that might help them to be more engaged if they're in virtual reality. Uh, and certainly, you're, we're hearing a lot these days about cryptocurrency and NFTs. And basically, it's about purchasing physical purchasing physical products or digital goods in virtual spaces. That's what I've got here. But in terms of um, if you can think of cryptocurrency as like the money that you would use to buy digital products and NFTs as the digital products. So one example of that, my nephew, even playing games in Fortnite, purchases items that will, will address his player uh, on the platform. So that's what they're talking about in the future. Um, companies like Nike just purchased a company that can create an NFT. So imagine being able to purchase a special digital pair of Nikes that your character could wear uh, in the metaverse. So those types of things. Um, and certainly purchasing physical products. So there was another interesting article that I saw that was about that will be for people that sell physical products, having a virtual store to sell your physical products will be a way for consumers to potentially come into the metaverse and experience or the virtual space and experience your products and services before they actually make a physical purchase. And then you would ship them the product that they purchase. So certainly lots of potential for future for most of us. I would say you don't need to worry about that right now. The metaverse is not necessarily owned by Facebook, though he would like us to think that is. There are several different companies creating their own versions of the metaverse. Uh, and there's talk of potentially decentralizing a metaverse in the future. So um, the last point on the slide is a little tongue in cheek here where I say uh, in the future we'll have a decentralized social network not owned by any of the big guys that is built on the blockchain that doesn't monetize our personal information and destroy society to achieve profit. So obviously a little, little uh, sarcastic tone there, but there are people now that are working on the building blocks potentially for the future of something that might be a decentralized social network um, that where we won't all be beholden at the mercy of these large uh, US based tech companies. And now TikTok, of course, is a Chinese company as well. So that's the future. So takeaways, think about how you can humanize your brand and be more authentic if you are not already including real photos and or real vertical video of you, your team members, your customers and your social marketing. It's time to do that. Uh, also thinking about how can you support the causes you value and um, how will you communicate this to your audience. I want to just mention, a, I mentioned briefly earlier, my friend Deb Alcadino, she started a company called businessforsocialgood.ca. That's business, the number four, socialgood.ca. And she is teaching Canadian business owners how to identify their values and how to connect and support uh, causes that are important to them and uh, how to communicate that in your marketing with your audience. So she's actually got a course coming up that starts uh, a little later this month, I believe. So if anyone's interested in that, let me know. And thinking about how can you um, potentially use some of those consumer trends, interesting and fun consumer trends around self-care, around fun, to uh, incorporate that in your marketing plan. And more importantly, how can you nurture your audience? Yes, we want to get them on our email list. Yes, we can send out email newsletters to, to nurture our audience. But I think we really need to step up our game in 2022 in terms of serving supporting and getting to know our audience. They want that two-way communication with us. So think about how can you nurture your audience in a more personalized and deeper way, whether it's sending a private message to say, hey, you know, hey, hey, Emily, how have you, how have you been? It's been a long time. Uh, or for me, I'm going to include that live audio room in a Facebook group as a, as a companion to my podcast as a discussion group so that it's not just me sharing my content, but I'll have an opportunity to actually build community and support and serve my community as well. And I think that's an interesting point also about 
our, our hesitation about putting ourselves out there on video, if you can think of it in terms of serving, educating, supporting, inspiring your audience, um, and not just promoting yourself, I think that might that framing might make it a little more comfortable for helping you get the confidence to get on video. Yeah. And one, one last resource I want to share here, LinkedIn Learning. So if you're not already familiar with LinkedIn Learning, it was formerly a site called lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A, and um, LinkedIn purchased them. So as LinkedIn is the economic graph compared with Facebook is the social graph, compared with Instagram is the interest an interest, interest graph where people connect around interests, um, LinkedIn, uh, learn, LinkedIn in general mapped out all the world's talent, us people, and all the world's companies and all the world's schools. And uh, they, so they know where skills gaps are. And they, they provide that information to, you know, governments, learning institutions. And so this was a natural fit for them to purchase, formerly known as lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A. It's now called LinkedIn Learning. And on this platform, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of skills courses. So you can learn everything from how to get comfortable on video, how to create a content plan. There are a number of social media marketing courses. There, there are a couple of courses even on social media trends. Um, and I just saw a course on TikTok and Instagram Reels, just as I was taking the screenshot this week. So that's a brand new course on the platform. Um, the cost, I believe, is $35 US a month to access all these courses. Uh, but if you, I'm certainly if you're in Canada, most Canadian libraries have a deal with LinkedIn Learning whereby you can use your library card to log in and access all these courses for free. So I don't know, you could, if you're in the US, you could certainly check and see if your local library has that kind of arrangement, but if not, it would be uh, 35 bucks a month. Wonderful resource. And I've got the reference links here in the slides for anyone that wants to check out some of the reports that I quoted. And I want to thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, so much for taking the time to spend with me and learn about social media trends. If you enjoyed learning from me today, uh, I would love for you to check out my social media marketing courses and workshops online. I also offer private lessons for those that are based uh, in the US and Canada, and I help people get started or get strategic with their social media marketing, help you get more comfortable so you can get on with your uh, supporting your professional and business goals in your social media marketing. Thank you again to all those who, who joined me and uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye.